My name is Hillary Jones. I'm a spiritual being on this journey of life. I'm a commercial banker. I'm a mentor and advocate for young girls, and I'm a meditation facilitator. Catch me on the Jesse T Show. The amazing and wonderful Hillary Jones. What's going on, girl? Hey, Jesse. Hell yeah. I'm so excited for this conversation. One of our great mutual connections, one of my great friends, Justin Sullivan, put us together and said, you two need to talk. You need to talk on the podcast. And so when he said that, I was like, I'm in. And oh. then when you and I connected the very first time, I was like, I know why he plugged me into you because of all that you do and our shared backgrounds and banking and our shared current journey on the spiritual path and awakening and all these things. So just a little bit of context, tell the world about you and, and what you do. So by day, I'm a commercial banker. Um, for a pretty large bank. And um, I work with small businesses and I really partner with them, try to help them through the process of navigating their business when it comes to their banking needs. So pretty straightforward, also a little complex as well, because everyone's different and needs something different. So that's what I do by day. Um, I would say outside of that, I spend a lot of time with young women. Um, I'm on the board of an organization called Cool Girls, as well as I mentor a lot of young girls um, kind of outside of that organization and just really try to lead the way for them. There's a lot there. We're going to unpack a little bit. So, <laughs> so uh, tell, tell us how you, uh, you were put on this path and this journey because you're in corporate America and you're achieving at a high level and that's one lane, but you're also a very spiritual person and you're a mentor and you're a student. So like, so where did all this come from? Talk about some of the different like uh, pinnacle points kind of coming up to, to where you got to today. Sure. Great, great question. So I've always kind of been a people person in sales. I like to connect. I mean, if I had to give a name for myself would be a connector, right? I love connecting people. And because it comes so naturally to me, sales was just kind of that that thing that I stepped into. But prior to even really getting into that, I opened up my own business at 25, had an all state insurance agency, was one of the best and craziest things I ever did at a young age, but I loved it. I think you can relate, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, And When I ended up selling that, um, it was just an interesting time, right? It was um, recession, it was 2009, couldn't find a job, but banking just was kind of waiting there for me. Um, And so I was able to start and really build my path. I've been in it for about 15 years. If you would have asked me as a young person, would I be in banking? The answer would be no, like probably not the most conservative, um, quite colorful person, um, which, I can bring to work now that I, you know, have matured a little bit and realized that, but at first I wasn't really sure how to do that. So yeah, I've been in banking 15 years um, and just kind of climbed my way through the industry. Um, And now I'm in commercial banking, corporate banking, which is awesome. So similar journey, but in reverse to where um, I was in banking first for a few years and didn't even understand. I I knew, so my, my, my quest was entrepreneurship. Um, and along that journey through my whole life, I had a scarcity mindset from how I grew up. And I was always like wanting to learn about abundance and wealth creation and and how to, you know, build a life. And I had this need and thirst for information. And it was so because of that, because it was centered around wealth creation and, and money management, like it led me down this path after being an entrepreneur for a few years with my old company, um, JLT marketing. I, w- I went from there and I worked in some other places for a while. But when I got to banking, what they were looking for was salespeople. And, and for me, I was a salesperson. I had this outside sales company managing 35 people in six offices around the country that were part of my business that like, that was what I was adept at was sales. And this was commission, cold call, door to door. Like this was the, the grunt work of sales. The real stuff. <laughs> and if you could do that, you could do anything. Sure. And, and so when I came with that experience, I remember the first bank I worked for was RBC Bank, which was prior to PNC Bank in the Southeast. PNC bought out RBC Bank. And I walked in there and I was going up against a guy that had two degrees, had been in banking for 10 or 15 years. I dropped out of college to go to the military. I had zero banking experience, but I had this wealth of like sales and leadership experience. And I was so nervous. I remember like waiting for the call on the, the top two interviews and I got the call and she's like, you got the job. And I'm like, really? Like compared to the other guy? And she's like, yeah, what I want is a salesperson. And then come to find out a lot of, a lot of banking when you get started is sales. Like you have to sell yeah. solutions. You have to sell products. You have to sell services. You have to sell an idea. And I crushed it. Like I went in there and I did really well and moved up pretty quickly. And so a similar kind of thing, but in reverse where um, I became a state farm agent right after. 
And so you were an Allstate agent first, and then you went into banking. And so we kind of had this interesting uh, parallel, but just in reverse. So what was that like for you going from running your own business into corporate? So great question. And I, I really want to touch on really quick, outside of the products and services you have to sell, in a sense, you have to sell who you are, right? Okay. Like, I think that that's the key, because if you build that connection and you sell yourself as the partner or this person that can represent their company when it comes to banking, I feel like that's like the first sale, right? And then you get into the products and services. To me, that's just like the cherry on top. Yes. The first is, do you want to bank with me? Do yeah. you see me as your partner? So for me, I feel like, in a sense, can you say I'm selling myself? But in a sense, of course, oh, yeah. 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 people right? have to buy you. And th this is something I use to this day is the first, the three P's I use in, in my financial planning business is personality, participation, and profit. And do we like each other? That's like the first thing. And that, that's, that's sales 101. Like you have to have some sort of rapport and some sort of trust and some sort of likability. And it comes down to who you are. Do people like you? Do they trust you? Do they believe that you could deliver what you say you're going to deliver? And then can you actually do that as a person? And I think that you have, people have to, you have to sell yourself, no question, before the idea of a solution ever comes to mind. I love it. Right, right. Yeah. But to answer your question, um, how's it been going from an entrepreneur to corporate America? Um, I think once an entrepreneur, always an entrepreneur. Sure. I don't think that ever dies. And in the role that I have, I call myself like an entrepreneur. Like, yes, the company <laughs> pays for the lights and, you know, my marketing, but I make my own schedule. It's up to me to hit a certain goal. Um, I don't really have anyone managing me. I, I do it all on my own. You have to be a self-starter, a really good self-starter. So it's not too different. Um, there are some some joys of not stressing about how you're going to keep the lights on, you yeah, know, yeah. you're not robbing Paul to pay Peter. You're just, you know, you're able to keep moving and kind of focus on your craft. Um, but only on business, there's nothing like it. I mean, you literally realize, oh, I can do anything. Mm -hmm. And being a small business owner and contributing to the economy to me is really special. Yep. Um, I think you have to be kind of crazy to be an entrepreneur. Um, <laughs> or stubborn crazy. or creative. Or creative, yeah. creative right? There's lots of things, but you you have to be able to think outside the box and, sure. you know, be able to test things and then recreate something again and then test it. The perseverance is just, it's amazing. That's um, the name of the game. Know. Stickativity yeah. is what we used to call it. Just not quitting and just, just, just yeah. hanging in there and learning and growing and evolving. And I was talking to somebody earlier today uh, in the UK, his name is Seven Jacobs and he's 20, almost 23. And this kid has had so much beautiful life experience and he's a He's a conscious entrepreneur. He wants to, you know, build businesses and he's helping build businesses with like people first in mind, whether that's employees, clients, whether that's how they uh, add value back into the world. Kind of like, have you heard of Tom's shoes company before? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so like you I buy one shoe, they don't. Yeah, so you understand like and it's, yeah. it's a purpose driven company and people at the top take less money so that they can go ahead and do the things that are they're driven by. This is where the world is heading, number one. And I think that because you are who you are and you've had your experience, you can add value in this lane. But also, I feel like, um, you know, there, there has to be this blend of for me anyway. What I do with the podcast, with my personal life and my business, it's all a lifestyle. Like it's all woven together. And I think that if you can really make that personal touch, especially in a corporate environment, that's when people really start to enjoy working with you. And I, I've seen, have you seen that same kind of thing where like you've had this experience before as an entrepreneur, now you're an entrepreneur, but you add your, your personality and it like just makes your whole life a lot more seamless or better. To me, it's called authenticity, yeah. right? Um, in a professional manner, but it's, it's still you being your authentic self and being able to show up. I think even today, especially after the pandemic, people really want to work with someone that they connect with and that they don't want, you know, that in the box, what it should look like, what you think you should get. Um, you know, they want to work with more women. They want to work with more people of color. Um, they want to work with people that maybe have struggled and now are at a certain place. They want to have a little bit more relatability and connectability when it comes to that. So being authentic and being yourself. Um, and one thing that um, you, could, you mentioned my mentor and I talk about, cause I'm like, oh, well, work's going really good, but something my personal life is it. And she's like, it's all the same. You're bringing yourself to everything. Yeah. All the paths cross. So it's not like, okay, work is great. My personal life's great. Like step back, assess the whole thing because you are you at every part of your life. It doesn't matter if it's professional. It doesn't matter if you move somewhere new, you're taking you everywhere. So I've been really focusing on that lately. Just just wanted to tell you about that. No, it's beautiful. <laughs> and, and this is something I learned uh, when I got into banking. When I got into banking, I was really rough around the edges. I was this, this sales guy, high energy that had, you know, just moved from Boston a couple of years prior and still had like this, you know, 
this way about me that was kind of um, was different. But when I learned that I could just settle into my own shoes and just truly be who I was and in an industry that doesn't really, at least when I was in, in banking, which was like 2011 to it's about 2015, um, it didn't really inspire or promote authenticity. It was very much put on a front, a facade. It was, uh, you know, dress a certain way. It was very political. And I'm a rebel at heart. Like I just, I just, I just can't not be me. And so I just walked in there and it was just this, this sales guy that had this, this uh, business acumen that knew nothing about banking It blew people away. And like, you started seeing clients gravitate your way. Like clients would, maybe they were working with the banker that was there before and no chagrin to that person. Cause they were probably a great person, but like they would start coming over to you and talking to you and asking questions from you. And it was just because of the way you made people feel no matter where you go, it's how you make someone feel, whether it's relationships, it's business, anything. And I think that if you can be more of you, that's what the world needs. It's exa- we need more Hillary. We don't need another Jesse. We don't need another you know, Paul or whatever. We need more individuals. And so how has that played out for you in your banking career in terms of the relationships with clients and then also your peers or, or, or people that are you know, uh, your leaders? Sure. So I think you know, the most important thing I maybe want us to take a step back is, is about nine years ago, I kind of started my spiritual journey um, where I became a you know, daily meditator, um, really started to take time just to read and just really educate myself on spirituality as a whole. And I slowed down. I slowed down. And I remember I've been working with the same woman for about nine years. And um, did she you know, get I, you into spirituality or is this when you were spiritually awakened, you found her? How, how did, how did the, the teacher appear when you were ready? Like, how did this work? So, here, okay. So here's a quick, funny story. Yeah, so yeah. Um, not to get in too much detail about my past dating life, but, um, <laughs> so I dated someone in Ohio who, um, was get up 4 a.m. every day and meditate. Wow. I did not meditate, but we, we were together and I was interested. So I was always intrigued. I've always been that person. Even as a young person, I would be like asking about different religions and help me understand. And, you know, adults were kind of shushing me at the time because I was a kid, but I've always been interested and open about spirituality. Um, and so I dated this guy, he meditated and I lost my father while we were together. Wow. And I remember he was like, let me just, let me just walk you through a meditation. And that's how it started, but it didn't stick then. It really helped me get through my father's death, but it didn't stick. I wasn't ready yet to make it a part of my life. And then, um, fast forward, I moved here in 2012, Atlanta, Georgia, and, um, yet another relationship that was going South. (laughs) I decided to go to a yoga class and after yoga, they were having a group meditation. And if you know anything about doing yoga to meditation, like you're all open, your body's feeling great. So that meditation is going to, it's going to be, it hits. Yeah. Yeah. It's going (laughs) to rock you. And I knew enough to not be fearful of it and just to just go with it. And so she was there, she was the facilitator. And then I went to her intro to meditation course. And then after that, we've been working together three times a month. And it's really about bringing my, spiritual self forward and how do I live life through inside out versus outside in what does your daily meditation practice look like I know we have like a a list of six things you do we can get into that here or or down the road in the conversation but what does the actual meditation practice look like in terms of roughly how much time and like what what are you doing or not doing during the meditation sure okay so um it's evolved over time yeah um at first I would lock myself in the closet and be all pitch black and no noise and I would try to (laughs) meditate because I'm like I can't do it it's too much noise (laughs) Um, and now I love the noise, right? Because I, it's almost like, um, a lullaby. Cause I can like completely kind of separate from it and go inward. Beautiful. So totally opposite, um, um, over time, but generally I'm always a morning meditation. So before I start my day, before I do anything, morning meditation and I get and as up as soon as you wake up ish. So I get up very early. So that the whole other thing I follow, which is called Ayurveda. We won't get into that. But anyway, it's about the times you go to sleep, wake up. We can't get into it if you want to. <laughs> that's, that's our next, that's our okay. next show. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I follow the sun to make it, to make it simple. Circadian rhythm. It's important. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So I like to get up before the sun rises. I do sun salutations in the morning yeah, and then yeah. I go straight to meditation. Right. So that is my daily practice every morning. I meditate anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. Um, you know, ego still involved. And sometimes I'm like, I don't have time. I got to get to work, right. but there's, you got to make more. time for it. Yeah. So time is so expansive. You know, if you, if you know how to use it. So I just, I sit down, I do it. Um, what is your, you have a mantra or like a focus or are you just still just stillness? 
So I use a mantra. Yeah. So the, the way I learned was silent mantra meditation. Um, there's chants, there's all types of things that you can do, but I pretty much use a mantra. And sometimes I do breathing, just following my breath. It just yeah. depends on, on where I'm at, but it's 20 to 30 minutes. And what happens in meditation is so funny because everyone's like, I can't meditate, but there is no can or can't like literally just, just sit down. It's just being like, yeah. I'll think about, I got to unload the dishwasher. Um, what color do I want to paint my nails? Um, who do I need to call after this? You know, like there's things, or if I'm really stressed, I'm thinking about a lot, but it's okay. That's why I do 20 to 30 minutes. Cause that yes. first 10 minutes I'm releasing, I'm, I'm, I'm allowing myself to release so that I can get to that lower, that lower kind of breath and a higher state of consciousness, but just a real yes. calmness. Yes. Um, so yeah. So, I mean, I, sometimes I have thoughts entire the entire meditation and sometimes 30 minutes felt like one minute. It's I amazing. Know, I know. It's I've amazing. done, I've done Tai Chi before uh, a bunch of times, but one time specifically, I remember I was, uh, with a, a mastermind group called fit for service and we were in Malibu. This was, uh, just before the pandemic, it was December of 2019. And, uh, I remember we were doing Tai Chi in a group of 30 people in this beautiful, uh, space. It's Calamigos horse ranch, which is incredibly gorgeous. We're in this green way. And there's a bunch of just high functioning hippies, like guys and girls are just standing around, like ready to just enjoy the day. And we're doing Tai Chi led by this guy, Kyle Kingsbury, who's another, you know, guru in his own way. And, uh, I just remember like he had us close our eyes and do something. And he was like, okay, it's going to be five minutes. And like, literally as soon as he said, it's going to be five minutes. I felt like it took a second. It's like, okay, five minutes is up. Like we were in this, this beautiful state of just wherever, whatever we were doing in terms of the Tai Chi slowed us down enough and moved enough energy through us to like, we could just be and just be present. And it was just one of those moments where like time was just instantaneous. It went by so quick. So I, I feel you on time sometimes just going by in a matter of an instant. It's crazy. Yeah. A lot of teachers are like, time isn't real. You know, I don't know that I've graduated <laughs> to like yeah. <clears throat> alter time that often, but I do know that when I'm not obsessing about it or trying to control it, yeah. I always have enough time. It is definitely a construct we've all agreed to uh, for a lot of different reasons. And, and there right. is all different kinds of space time and there's all different kinds of things that you can tap into and play with. But I have noticed uh, from a different way in terms of the future, I've been able to kind of pull things from the future into reality. And what that looks like is like uh, having a knowing more than just a belief or a thought, but having a knowing of this has already happened, but time hasn't caught up yet kind of thing. Like, and, and then all of a sudden it just, it's like manifestation. Like it just, whatever this thing was that I just knew in my soul or in my heart, wherever that it was just to be, it's just a matter of time hasn't actually caught up physically yet. And then all, a lot, when I get that notion, whenever I think about that 10 times out of 10, it always happens. It's crazy. So there's, there's something there in the quantum. I've been listening to Dr. Joe Dispenza and like all these different things and trying right. to like play with like different energies, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's powerful. Yeah. You said something that's important that I really am working hard and practicing. I shouldn't say I'm working hard. I'm willing to allow myself to stay in the present moment. Yep. Um, it is something I have to be willing to do every day. It doesn't just automatically happen and stay on. Um, but that's something that I, I've been focusing a lot on with work. Yep. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up for my job. I'm going to show up and I'm going to do what I need to do. But then I'm going to detach from the outcome, right? Like, I don't know if I'm going to win this deal. I don't know if they're going to call me back. I don't know. And as soon as I detach and just trust the process, just trust it, boom, it happens, right? Like people always like, so you're so successful this year. What's going on? And I'm like, I show up, I do my job. Um, I show up authentically. I do my job, but I also detach from the outcome because there's this, this knowingness and universal trust of if it's supposed to happen, it's going to happen. No question. Like, I can't come in with, with myself and try to manipulate and control it because it never works. What is meant for I, you will be for you, so to speak. Relationships, right. money, abundance, all the good things, all the things in life, whatever it is. And it's, it's really a matter of you're letting go of surrendering to the outcome, like you said. And it's also a matter of just uh, like, really just kind of moving and, and, and being authentic and shining your light everywhere. So instead of waiting for that one deal to come through, maybe at like end of month, you need to hit a certain number or units or quota or revenue, whatever it is. If you, if you can touch enough people and be authentic with enough people, and add enough value to enough people, it's, 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 it's karma in a sense. It's, it's hard work. You're putting in the work, you're putting in the, the reps, so to speak. But at the end of the day, you, you know that you're doing enough and you're adding enough value and you're kind of releasing it back to the universe saying, I've done my job. Now it's up to you. Like, like now. Perfect. Kick, yeah. Kick it back. <laughs> no, that's perfect. That's, a, that's literally like you, you 
presented that perfectly. That's literally what's in my mind. I just, you know, I don't say that at each time, but that's what I'm thinking. Like, okay, I showed up. I've done what I needed to do the best that I could do. Now we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll let it roll how it's going to roll. What other ways has meditation uh, impacted your life? Wow. Um, I'm not sure how I would have been during this pandemic without it. Um, I'm not sure how a lot of people are doing without meditation during this pandemic. I mean, you know, we hear all the time about, you know, the mental health crisis or issue that's happening that's been here, but it's just another light has really been shined on it. So I would say just these past, you know, almost two years um, grounded me, um, really taken to a yummy place. I, I think yumminess <laughs> like get to this place it. of like, <laughs> um, just at peace, you know, I remember that time where everything shut down. And I remember going for walks and like feeling the energy of the universe and looking at the sky and looking at all these animals that I didn't even know were in my neighborhood that decided that they were going to come out and hang out. And I just remember thinking like, almost just emotional, like how beautiful this is, right? Yeah. Because I'm so busy and so caught up that I wasn't even seeing what was around me. So meditations just provided me to slow down, um, stroke the ego and quiet it when it needs to be. Um, I think it's allowed me to be just a better human being um, and want to be of service and how do I serve others? And it's not just about me. Yeah. So it's, I mean, I, it's, I think emotional maturity, um, trusting who I am and, um, I don't know, just lo I love it. It's done so much. There's so many things I could go on and on, but it's done a lot. What about the other few things, um, that are on that, that daily kind of like spirituality list of like uh, part of just your integration into everyday life. So there are like, there are things that we do as human beings, like that, not that we take for granted, but we don't pay a lot of attention to. And they're so simple that if we did these simple things, like life would be so different for all of us. And so one, which sounds crazy, but is sleep. Um, I am a hardcore, I'm in the bed at nine o'clock. Good for you. In the bed. And you I'm know, up. Can we, can we also talk about the, the setting? Like, are, are we talking like pitch black, no TV, no electronic, like, like how, how, yeah. how much do you get into the whole like sacredness of that space for sleep? So I turn off all electronics. So okay. every, my, my phone naturally goes on do not disturb at 8 PM. Yep. Only my favorites can get through <laughs> and it stays on do not disturb to 8 AM. Okay. So for me, I, I want to not, if I can talk on the phone for 12 hours. Yeah. So that's just number one. Um, now I'm not going to act like I don't have social media and that I, you know, I'm not on my phone, online shopping because yeah, yeah, look, yeah. I'm human. Those things are happening. But for me, I really try by nine o'clock and I really, so my phone gets darker, all my electronics get darker as well. So as the sun goes down, I'm, I'm lowering the light Beautiful. period everywhere. You're changing the color of the light from like blue light to red light, or do you, do you even go that far? Cause there's ways to different kind of light bulbs you can use. I mean, you can get really deep into this. <laughs> I, do, I only do that when I'm in the infrared sauna and okay, I'm beautiful. using color therapy and yeah. depending on what I need. So I do know about that, but I don't have that set up in my home. Jesse. Okay. <laughs> well, if you do, maybe I need to come to your house. Yeah, and check yeah, yeah. I'm so, I'm so, listen, I got, I have, I've, I've shifted so many things in my life over the last couple of years. It's just progression. I don't need to do it all at once, but that's, that's one of the next things that will be coming is, is, is augmenting the, the natural light versus the blue light. And then also working. And I've had, I've had these, I had a couple pair of glasses. I can give you a pair if you want, but like, you can wear these glasses that are like uh, blue light blocking glasses that kind of help put you into, Oh, look at you. Look at so you. Mine. Yeah. So, you know, but I'm working. Here we go. <laughs> Heck yeah. So, yeah. So all those things, but anyway, so you, you start, you start shutting it down. You start, you're in bed by nine, you're, you're, you're starting to power down and then go from there. Um, and if I'm restless and can't sleep, I might read. Um, I might listen to something. Like I'm not actually physically looking at it, but I might listen to something, some white noise, um, you know, something from one of my teachers, just yeah. something that I just might have that just kind of bring me down. Um, also yoga nidra, which is like a way to like calm the entire body down, but you're, you're not sleeping yet. Um, so things around that. So sleep, just I'm in bed. 10 o'clock is, is the latest that I will be sleeping. The last bus leaves at 10. Got it. You stay up past 10. That's when you're getting snackish. Yes. You want to eat. And yes. it, it almost turns you back on. And that's the thing about with Ayurveda is that from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., you're digesting all your food for the day. So your body is working hard. You should be sleeping by then. Yeah. If you yep. can. Supporting so. the digestive process by not doing anything else and letting the full attention be on that. That's, that's good. 
Yes, that's where the late night munchies come from, just so you know. Um, <laughs> so I go to sleep 10 and I'm up usually by five. Okay. Um, nine to 10, I'm up between 4.45 and 5.30 every day. And, and is this something, do you need your alarm or are you programmed? Programs. I don't ever use an alarm. How long have you been on this, this system for in terms of like sleep cycle? I allowed myself to try it at the beginning of the pandemic. Yep. Um, prior to that, I was probably like a 10, 11, 6, 7 person. Yeah, yeah, so it wasn't same. too off. Yeah. Um, but I was like, let me tighten it up and see if I really feel a difference. And you do. I mean, there's something so beautiful that happens before the sun comes up. There's I, so, I can't explain it. It's all no, it's 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 also uh just natural. If you think about our ancestors and they followed the sun, they, they, they had to hunt during the daylight. They had to eat during the daylight. They had to do everything they could during the, like, that's just how they operated. Yep. And so it's in our DNA, it's in our epigenetics, but at the same time, um, it's just, I think, I think I may have mentioned this to you before. And if not, there's so much stuff I want to share with you, but there's a guy named Paul check C H E K. Paul check is one of the, the forefathers of what they call biohacking in terms of at least modern biohacking anyway. And he has a book um, and, and it talks about the four doctors and the main doctor is Dr. Sleep. And the idea of these doctors is if you pay attention and get to know these doctors, you won't need other doctors. You won't need to go get surgeries or pain medicines or, you know, mental health medicines. Like you can literally like your, your body's a marvel. We still don't understand 90% of what we can do. And, and we're just still tapping into these things by using ancient modalities, but also new technologies and like this beautiful blend of the both. And the, the whole point of that is he, he talks about Dr. Sleep being like the most important doctor that you can make friends with. So like sleep cycle and how you sleep, your quality of sleep and, you know, how the places you sleep and temperature. And there's so much that goes into this. And, and there's books that are written on this. Um, some really powerful books, but yeah. So Paul Check sleeping is, is really huge. So outside of meditation following the sun slash sleep cycles. What are some other modalities or things? I think you said you had a list of six daily practices. I do. Yeah. Um, and when I sleep, I sleep very cold and dark. Same. I'm not so, really quite to the cold part. Like, cause I only dropped down to about 72 and I know people go like 67, 68 and I like to be warm, but I also just being frank, I don't wear any clothes. So it's like, I think I'm getting enough coolness, but at the same time I need to, I, I could drop down a few degrees. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. I learned yeah. something new about you today. For that visual, there you go. <laughs> um, so the third thing is um, movement. Okay. Hell yeah. um, for me and for all of us, you know, I mean, I'm not a movement expert, but I know that if I don't do some type of movement daily, it, it alters my mood. It's like, oh, yeah. it's like almost the energy is stagnant, right? And so if I don't move it around and get out the toxins or get out things that I need to get out, I'm grouchy. Like I, I feel, I get, I get fussy, I get antsy. Like I have to have some form of movement and I'm not saying I'm out here running a marathon, but even if I just go walk a couple of miles, I do yoga in the morning, um, you know, get on a spin bike. Um, for some reason, walking's kind of been my jam since the pandemic of just going on nature walks. And yes. Time. Yes. So but, real quick, real quick before we dive, go any further, cause this is super important. So nature and walking, um, the, the idea, and this is not, this is something you have to build your life into your life. So, um, the healing benefits, the mental acuity and, and the things that, that you get downloaded in, in, in terms of thoughts and, and feelings through walking second to none. And I was listening to somebody talking about the, the healing benefits and the, and the intelligence benefits that you get from an hour a day, whether that's a half an hour here or 15 minutes here, if you can work from home and you go take a phone call, like I'm really, I used to be good at pacing. So like I, I used to have an office space where I like walk out in front of the door and like pace back and forth, just increase the, increase the longevity of that pace, like walk around the building or like take your shoes off and go ground on the ground, like nature. There's so much stuff that you can do, but being in nature and walking again, goes back to what we were designed to do. And it was like, these are the things that we always used to do. And so funny because the pandemic was really interesting how they were coaching us and teaching us how to heal ourselves, which was through medicine. It was through a vaccine, which, you know, if you take a vaccine, great. If you don't, great. I'm all about pro-choice, but with, uh, with what they really could have been talking about sleep, nutrition, movement, vitamin D, all these natural things that like make you healthy and make your body strong and make you anti-fragile. Not one, not really anybody who had a, a pulpit to stand from and preach from was talking about it. It was all vaccine, vaccine and mass, mass, mask and be indoors. And again, if that's your preference, that's cool. But like, they weren't giving us the other side of it that would have really helped aid in those other measures. It's incredible, but it sounds like you're doing some of those things through your, your daily life. 
Absolutely. There's no money in the natural stuff though, you know? Right. <laughs> and there's, um, there's freedom in the natural stuff. There's power there. Like that's, we can get into a whole nother conversation about the, the limited power that the government and things kind of like, like let us have, but we are powerful creators. We're powerful healers. And like, we can be completely sovereign. We can be, it just, anyway, that's getting down the rabbit hole, but, uh, but I, know. I often <laughs> just really quick. I'll say, I often think since I've been on this really just strong spiritual journey this last nine years, I was like, why wasn't I taught about self-love in grade school? Like, I, I was thinking like, I would be running everything if someone would have taught me about that kindergarten, Yes. you know, first yes. grade, second yes. grade, it was a part of the curriculum is to learn about what self-love looks like. No question. No question. It's amazing. It, it's so funny that when you get on this spiritual journey, that becomes so prevalent, self-care, self-love, like, cause you can't love anyone else truly, unless you love yourself truly. It's like pouring right. from an empty cup. How can you give something you don't have? That's right. And it's so funny because um, I have been called to self-love uh, specifically the last couple of years. I had gone through a divorce and you know, my ex-wife has become a really good friend of mine. And, um, but during that process, it wasn't easy. And uh, there was a book that was something I started that found me. Like I'm really big on you know, when you're ready, the, the teacher will appear, whether that's you know, a person, a podcast, a book, what, a relationship, whatever. You can learn from everything. And this book that came across my desk was called Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends On It. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know if you've heard of it before, but it, it's a life-changing book. It has a seven-minute meditation that's a mantra that can change your life if you do it for even just 30 days. And it talks about when was the last time anyone was ever taught to tell themselves they love themselves every day? Mm -hmm. and, I, and this really hit home for me months ago where... I was doing some self-talk and I did something that I wasn't happy with. And I was like, oh, you motherfucker, I'm like talking about myself. And because I had read that book and I know the power of words and the power of like subconscious, like you can't call yourself a motherfucker. Like nobody else would do that. Nobody else would get, not that they would get away with it, but like if, if you consistently called me that, we wouldn't be friends. Like it's just not, it's just not how I operate. So right. loving yourself like your life depends on it is, uh, is so powerful. And it comes from this beautiful vibration. There's something I experienced a, a while back using plant medicines and uh, it was called the God frequency. And this is actually something my buddy sent me. It was the God frequencies talked about uh, in the Bible too. And it's a way to manifest miracles. And one of the part of one of the parts of God, the God frequency is, uh, is love. It's the, one of the highest vibrations we can have on this earthly plane. And it's interesting because a lot of times, even though we think we love ourselves, I, I, I question people like, when's the last time you actually told yourself you love yourself? Yeah. It's a, uh, it's work in progress, right? Because we've been so programmed to just be hard on ourselves, to sabotage things. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, the list can go on. Um, but I am grateful for, uh, that's nothing that meditation has brought is awareness. Yes. My awareness has heightened so much in these last 10 years. And when I hear it or just how you caught yourself calling yourself the MF or, you know, I'm going to be good. I'm not going to, I'm not, I can say it on the show, if, 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 <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you caught it. Right. And so you were like, oh, okay, I need to, I need to back that up. I need to switch gears and think yeah. something a little bit more positive about myself. It's like, we have our light and we have our shadow. You have both sides. Got to have both. Like you, right. We would be, we wouldn't exist if we did not as yep. human beings. Right. Yep. And I'm finally getting to the place where I can laugh at the shadow. Like it's not that big of a deal and shine some light in there. Like, okay, like, all right, I see it. We'll move on. Let me shine a little light. Someone gave me this illustration that was beautiful and, and I'm, I'm a yes to everything you just said. But if you look at like a drum of oil and you, you know how like dark oil is, mm -hmm. but if you look at the top of the oil, it has this iridescent rainbow. So like, mm -hmm. even though it's this, this perpetual, just darkness, if you look at it from a different perspective, you can actually see the color and see the rainbow. I was like, holy shit, that's beautiful. Yeah. And it's like, it's like you, you, you to, it, it's contrast. You can't know life without death. You can't know pleasure without pain. You can't know light without dark. And you need these polarities. And, and it, we're in a very interesting time right now with the world and the, and the collective pain that we're feeling. But there's a beautiful collective raising of consciousness at the same time. That's and right. so people that are on this spiritual journey are they're, they're, they're light workers. They're bringing light in the world. They're bringing healing into the world. It's because of the darkness that we're facing. It's because of the political and the injustice with human rights and, 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 and uh, you know, all sorts of crap that's just happening. It's actually needed, I think, because what's happening, and, I, and I'm sure you probably see this in your, your circles, but I can see people with loud, 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 like megaphone, like, like platforms to speak from that are talking about this type of stuff on how to 
bring awareness and raise consciousness and love, light, and truth. And like, it's, it's just getting so loud. It's getting so loud that it's deafening. And I, I think it's, I think it's because of the negativity that's happening in the world right now. It's being matched. If love will always win love and truth will always love, always. love, love, truth and freedom, regardless of what happens over the next few years with economy and po- political, we're going to humans were designed to survive and we do it with love, light and truth and freedom. So, yeah. And you have to see the dark. So, you know, where to shine the light. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we had, we had to go through what we're going through and still going through Oh yeah. to know where we need to shine the light. Um, and humanity, we, I, that's a whole nother podcast. We're not even going, let me, let me tell you my next item on my list. It's a serious. <laughs> <laughs> is, um, nutrition. Yeah. which I'm sure, you know, goes yeah. Through, yeah. Cause we could go down, we could go down like eight different ways. So, okay. So, so we have the next one on the list, which might be number three or four. I've lost count, but nutrition. Um, number four. Yes. Nutrition. Yes. Um, and so for me, I mean, you know, I think everybody gained that pandemic 15 or whatever. Yeah. Um, but what I know is bad food, bad mood, food, what you eat is directly correlated to your emotional state. No question. Um, and so for me, it's just to eat as clean as possible. So I've been experiencing on this. I hate to call it vegan. It's almost vegan for the most part. I would say I've been yeah. on this kind of journey. Um, and it's been good. I've just been doing it because I've had time and I've been able to work from home and allow myself some more time to cook and do things. Um, I enjoy it. I like it. I see why, you know, eating off the land, um, eating fruits and vegetables, what that actually does to your emotional state, your body. I mean, the body will follow, right? But change the mind, change the habits. The body just goes right where it needs to go. Um, But that's been another one that's just like, I know if I'm going to go out and eat something that maybe is not the best for me, I need to be prepared on how I'm gonna feel afterwards. Now, yeah. I'm not like down in the dumps, but it just affects my energy, my sleep, everything. So no nutrition. Question. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's cliche, you are what you eat. And, and it's true though. And it's, it's, it's how the food is sourced and, and it's, it's, it's uh, you know, what, how, how quality the food is. And it's, we live in a society where everything is, is on demand. Like you talked about doing some online shopping and some Amazon shopping, you can have whatever you want the very next day. Like they're making it really easy for people to be lazy, right? It's like, if you walk down the street, a stone's throw, you can walk into five or 10 different fast food joints. Right. And it's really, really easy to get sucked into the, the quick, the fast, the, the, the there for you. But again, going back to our ancestors, I'm going to keep, keep harping on this. You had to hunter gatherer whether you're gathering berries and nuts or you're going after some, some, some wildlife, you had to a be in shape because you weren't catching it. And B you had to be able to like bring that stuff back and eat it like pretty much right away. So it had to be fresh. It had to be real. And it, you know, we can get into all that stuff later, but basically at the end of the day, what you put in your body is going to absolutely affect how you think, how you feel. Um, and I can tell this too, cause I, I'm not, listen, I still love junk food. I still love pizza. I love all that stuff, but it's, it's, I try to be 80, 20, like 80% of the time, whole foods, right. healthy, nutrient dense, like all this stuff, but I'll, I'll eat whatever I want. You know, as long as it's in that smaller framework of, of, of the whole plan. But at the end of the day, it's, it's all about what you put in your body is, 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 and then even beyond what you put in your body, like from minerals and nutrients and like supplements, cause there's some things you just can't get from eating. And so you have to be mindful of that. You also have to be mindful of like what's good for your body and what's not good for your body in terms of like probiotics and different types of food. And there's this, uh, this company that I used a couple of years ago called Viome, V-I-O-M-E. And Viome tells you your gut health. And the reason why this was important to me is because I learned through the years that, you know, your gut acts as a second brain, uh, but also it's where most disease starts. And so if you can really tap into and tune your gut, um, you can potentially live healthier longer. And so I found out for me by doing this, you know, things that were healthy, things like chickpeas with hummus or like scallops, you know, I love seafood. These things I would think are natural and healthy, but they were actually hurting me because the way my gut biome was designed. Yeah. And I even had friends that like broccoli was bad for them. So you, they're like, go eat your vegetables, but like, you have to be careful which ones you eat for you. So I think even getting deeper into the actual science of it um, is super important, but at least start with whole foods, vegetables, fruits, and then go from there. That's right. I just, you know, I can't slam on donuts every day and think that I'm going to perform. But they're good. They are good. (laughs) They taste great. (laughs) And we'll have to um, do another, uh, 
another meeting or another conversation because no question. I will be starting something new in the future around lymphatic, the lymphatic system yes. and lymphatic facials and yes. um, kind of incorporating what I do with Ayurveda. So, so I will connect with coming in my life, like the rollers and moving the lymph around your face. And so imagine that you come and you lay down and I start and I do your entire face, your neck and your whole face changes shape because the mucus. Yes. So up. you know. So, yeah. so, okay. sign me up. All yeah. right. So next month, I'll be, so we'll talk about it next month. Yeah, we'll, sure. do another, we'll do another, another call, but uh, talk about that journey for you in terms of learning about, because moving your, the lymph around and like, that's a whole nother side to wellness. Where did you hear about this? Like what, what's your, uh, your implement or tools that you use to help do that? Sure. So, um, I can only speak so much into it cause I don't get certified till next month, but I loved it so much as a client that I was like, this is a part of wellness I want to be a part of. And this is what I want to offer, maybe starting out to friends and family, and then maybe can turn into, you know, a lucrative business or not, I'm not even in it for the money, but can turn into a business that I can sustain myself. I Inner say. entrepreneur. There you go. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I went to get a facial, um, it's a sinus facial. Um, I've always had like just sensitivity around the sinus area. And let me tell you, the first facial I got, I transcended. I felt like I wanted to throw up. Wow. Because my body flooded with oxygen. Like I didn't even know like what awesome breathing felt like. And, and I bet you a lot of people don't know. I bet you people think that breathing just fine. Have your entire sinus cavity like completely drained and it's, and it's vibrational. So she's using a bamboo roller. Um, she's using uh, lots of different <laughs> tools. And then it just comes, it comes through. Yeah. And the first thing I noticed was that um, my face was long, but when she was done, it was round because as mucus runs, it pulls your face structure down. So I'm thinking I have this long chin and really I have a very round head. Right. So, I mean, just amazing what the body does when you move things around. And to me, mucus is probably just like that silent killer that we don't talk about yeah. that is really affecting us. So, um, she's very big on holistic. She's very big on People say they're healthy and, you know, they got, they got COVID and they got sick or they died. But she was like, how is your lymphatic system performing? Because that's key. So I'm still in the process of learning, um, but I can't wait to share it with you. Um, I can't wait to be one of the first people you do it on, like with your certification. I'll do it with you now. Like, I don't care. I already know, you know what you know. So like, like you're already learning, you're growing, but yes, yeah, sign me up for that. Um, and, and I'm, I'm all about things like that. Just learning and trying. I like, I'm a curious explorer. I like trying different things. I like seeing what's out there and this that's the thing about this whole like uh, journey of life is like, you just got to find, even if it's seasonal, uh, like it seems like meditation is going to be a staple for you for the rest of your life. Right. But then there's things that are seasonal where like you may do cold therapy for a year or two, but then you may get away from it and go do sauna for a while. You may mix them up both. But like, what I'm trying to say is like all the different modalities are out there. Just pick the ones that you like, because those are the ones you're going to want to do. Don't do something just because someone says you have to do it. Like if you don't like running every day, you're not going to run every day. Like find something that works for you. And just do it. So now we're on the list. Are we number five? So here are the last, yeah, number five, which we kind of been talking about throughout the conversation, which is emotions. Yes. And just taking responsibility. It's not, not managing them, but like, you know, if I say something, if I'm in a bad mood and I say something um, that I didn't really mean to say, and it just came out due to where I'm which happens. state of mind, I'm in like, you know, do I make amends to you? Do I reach out to you and say, look, you know, Hey, sorry, I was in a bad mood or, um, can we start all over? Because that was not my intention. So just taking a responsibility for your emotions, I think goes hand in hand with allowing yourself or being willing to be self-aware. Looking at yourself is hard as hell. Like it's not easy. You know, I have these, you know, like I said, I meet with my mentor and we talk and I guess you call her a spiritual teacher as well. And she's, I mean, she says stuff and I'm like, yo, I, I was, I wasn't ready to hear that. Like I need what I'm saying to let it land. Give me a minute and then come, you know, but it's just, I'm okay now to be, okay, let me listen to it. Like, cause I know that the intent from that person is coming from a good place. Right. Yes, yes. And I need to hear it. It's something that I need to hear regardless if I'm ready or not. So for me, it's just that emotional side, like being really aware, like, okay, I'm not here. I'm not in a good mood or, you know what, today is not the day for me to communicate with others. Right. If you woke up on a Monday and you had podcasts to do, and you were like, you know what, today might not be my day, which has happened. And I've reached out and I've rescheduled. Like I just, yeah. I was very aware. Like in those days I muddled through and like you find your happy or find your emotions, but there's just some days you just need to not do. And I've definitely done that before. So just reduce for me, it's, 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 I'm very charismatic. That can also lead to drama. And so reduce the drama, 
focus on very joyful light things. And I'm not training my mind to do it. I'm just like, eh, do I really need to go to a 10? Like maybe we'll just stay at a two and just move on, you know? Right, right, so right. that's just me. Just, just being aware of my emotions and being honest with myself, honoring them. So powerful. Them. Yeah. And, 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 and naming them and feeling, feeling them, especially for a guy growing up, um, you know, most men are never taught how to, you know, convey, describe, talk about their emotions. And it's just because their forefathers before them were the same way. And it's, you know, as you go back generation to generation outside of like the shining lights, like most people, like they, they just got, if you look at like my grandfather, my grandfather was very abusive uh, physically to, to my dad. Um, and my dad wasn't physically abusive to me, but he was emotionally abusive. So like there's this generational trauma that's been passed down. And if you go back generations and generations, like people were just harder back then. People weren't as aware people weren't as a, uh, you know their consciousness weren't where it is today and so even there's stuff where i feel like um i'm aware of a lot of these things i'm doing a lot of these things there's still things that i need to heal not only for myself but then for my sons and this also heals back there was this uh, beautiful picture and it's um when you heal generational trauma like your ancestors smile like they, they, they get very happy and there was a lineage like there was like let's say you're standing here and then there's like 10 women before you that go back 10 generations and they're all just smiling for you but what I also learned, and this is really deep in the spiritual world, is uh, your ancestors were always with you. I'm actually going to be on a call with, um, her name is Manuela, and she's she's big into spirit guides and angels and different things, and she can see the guides that are around you. So this is getting into the woo-woo space, but this is where I like to live sometimes. And so um, I'm going to find out because my buddy, his name is Lane, uh, we just did a podcast episode on our journey through Mexico, which is really fun. He talks about all these different things from cacao ceremonies to orgasmic sex class to sweat lodges to plant medicines. And we're really big into these, these different modalities. And she, he was telling me about this woman. She saw 1,200 guides around him. Like he's just a very powerful dude with like a lot of help around him. And all this to say that what I learned about ancestors, and I know we're kind of talking about something a little separate here, but the, the, the energy that's around you is I had a daughter that passed away years ago. She was seven days old and I held her till she passed away. And I've lost my mom and my dad since then. So some of the most important people in my life have passed away. I went on this spiritual journey to Peru back in March this year during, you know, a pretty, pretty heavy part of COVID where travel was hard and still was called to go. And, and you know, it was, un, it was uncomfortable at best. It wasn't hard. So it's a, it's a long flight from Atlanta. It's almost 20 hours to get to where we were in Cusco, Peru. 16 hours one way, about 19 hours back, whatever it was. And, you know, you get the face mask, the face shield. It's just uncomfortable, right? It's not Long a big time. Deal. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a pain in the ass. But one of my main intentions when getting to Peru was to, to spend time with my daughter, who had only been alive for seven days. And I just wanted more time with her. I really wanted to be with her. And so uh, I worked with this plant medicine. It's called uh, San Pedro, which comes from a cactus and you drink it. And it takes you to an altered state of consciousness, takes you to a little bit of a different realm. And you're able to really plug into spirits heavily. And so I sat with my daughter for two hours in the hills, sacred valley of Cusco, Peru. And then I was able to sit with my mom and my dad. Um, and then I was able, just their energy, just like their spirit. Um, I didn't actually physically see their bodies, mm -hmm. but I knew it was them. And I knew their energy, knew their spirit. And then I saw laying down on the ground. This is late, like way more out there, but I saw hieroglyphics in the clouds. I knew those were my ancestors. Mm -hmm. And I was like... I, I had this beautiful, I was crying. It was this beautiful. I was crying. Uh, it was, it was deep. It was heavy. And when I came back to this reality from that journey, um, I realized that our ancestors are always with us. My daughter, who I was searching for, for years to be with again, she never left their energy. They stay with you. So I think it's just really important for people to understand things like that and just know that there's more than just the status quo, whether it's meditation, whether it's yoga, whether it's whatever it is, you can ascend and transcend to where you're living a better life, but like you're, you're tapping into something bigger than yourself. So. Yeah, that's, um, that's beautiful. Um, I love that you had that experience and not everybody gets that. Um, <clears throat> my sister died in 2016 and, um, she was in hospice during her, her, um, later days. And I remember we were all leaving to go get something to eat. And she's like, she wasn't really talking at this point. I mean, you know, they don't talk a lot right before they die. Um, and they tend not to, I should say, when right. you're in hospice. And um, she's like, Hillary, Hillary, come here. And she's like, do you see them? Do you see them? Do you wow. see dad? Wow. Because our dad died it. in 2007. It makes me emotional even thinking about it. But she's talking to me, asking me if I see dad, because she literally sees him in the room with her. And they were super close. Um, 
it was one of the most beautiful experiences watching my sister die. Yes, of course I miss her, but she's not suffering anymore. And I'm grateful for that. So powerful. But I tell you, when she asked me if I, and I didn't physically see him, but I felt him. So, if, you know, I said, yes, I see him just because I didn't want to freak her out when right, she's right. asking me, you know, <laughs> but it's just, um, death is, is, is beautiful. I mean, it's a part of life. Um, I is. probably have a less emotional um, outlook on death because I've been able to experience it at a higher spiritual level. So it, it's, it's different, but that's again, yet another podcast, Jesse. I, we're going to no, definitely just, do. Just I, sign I, me up. <laughs> I know. I've had, I've had uh, people that I fall in love with, uh, you know, men and women that have come on the show multiple times. And this is definitely something we're going to run it back a few times at least, but uh, you're talking about death being a beautiful thing. There's two things that came up for me. Um, the first one is, this is really beautiful. Have you ever heard the name Ram Das? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ram Dass was just a great thinker, a great spiritual leader. Um, you know, people call him a guru, all that stuff. And uh, his thing was, when he was talking about death, he's like, when you die, it's like taking off a, a, like an overly tight pair of shoes. So like you're, 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 you're isn't that beautiful? It's so freaking beautiful. Like it's sit and think about it. It's like when you're wearing uncomfortable shoes, it's just like this beautiful release. And you're like, oh, finally, like now I can relax. And now I can be like, like yeah. comfortable. Yeah. And it's like, when you're leaving the body, your spirit is finally free and finally beautiful. So that's another, another way to like, I'm getting chills thinking about it, but it's another way to think about death. And another thing about death that I've learned too, is uh, they're doing a lot of science around this where um, some of the, some of the plant medicines I've worked with before have DMT in it. And DMT is what's known as the spirit molecule. And the spirit molecule can help you with divine contact. It can help you with healing all, your own trauma. It can help you with business insights, relationship insights. It can really do a lot of things. And uh, we have endogenous DMT in our third eye for people that, you know, want to learn more about this. But uh, when people die and they come back and they have like near death experiences, what they're finding out is the body's naturally releasing DMT so that you can pass more peacefully like she did. Like she just saw she's like, I see dad. So there's they're, they're starting to put correlation together. There's these teacher plants that are given to us, I believe, by a higher power, whatever you believe in God, source, whatever. Um, that have these things that we have in us. And it, it, it's for a reason. We've evolved alongside of these things, whether it's mushrooms or plants, and they have an innate intelligence and they allow us to tap into these realities that really allow you to live life differently. Like my life's been completely changed by them. And then when you learn about the science side of it, like there's a lot of, uh, there's a company in California called MAPS, uh, Multi Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, Johns Hopkins, all these big like medical places are really starting to find out that these natural plants that create these altered states are going to be tools to heal anxiety, depression, drug addiction, all these kind of like uh, mental disorders. And it's, it's beautiful because it's happening in our time. So I'm excited to see where that, that kind of went on a rabbit trail. I'm excited to see where that goes though. No, oh, yeah, no, that's good. Um, I want to learn more about that. Um, yes. We'll chat <laughs> off later off the podcast. Um, the last one's grounding. We've already Number talked six. about. Yeah. <laughs> Number six, grounding. Talk about and it. I love we grounding. We talked about it. Um, just, I think people don't even think about how. I mean, we are the universe, literally, and yeah. like connecting to it energetically with your feet is so important. Or laying down, getting you know, my rules get natural vitamin D once a day, even if the clouds are out. Like I still go out there, like and just get. The sun, I mean, the sun's still out there. I just can't, you know, see it necessarily, but it's, yes. it's light. So it's still out there. Yep. So it's really important just to connect with the universe and to not disconnect. Um, that's another thing, like I've been thinking so much about is just like the amount, I mean, we're not going to go on the pollution conversation, but I noticed how clean everything got when we shut down for a month, just around like littering, like just, I was time. like, you know, Atlanta has a lot of like the city, there's a lot of trash, unfortunately. Yeah. It's not bad. It's not like New York, but it's still a lot. And I just think about like, I'm so connected to the universe. Like, it's like, this is me and I'm it and you're my baby. And like, I, you know, don't, don't dirty it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, love it, you know, yeah. keep some trees, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's literally, I'm feeling it becoming one. And I've never really allowed myself to feel that. Um, but I was saying these last couple of years, I've really connected on a deeper level. So the grounding part is really important to me. I, mean, I literally get grouchy if I've been in my apartment two days and I'm like, wait a minute, I haven't even went outside and I'm working. What the heck? Like, I need to go back to my little top six list and head so outside. It's funny because um, 
I talked about grounding today in another conversation, again, going back to seven Jacobs, um, who is a social entrepreneur and he's a young kid, he's 22, but he's had a lot of life experience. He's lived in Nepal. And he was talking about how, when he lived in Nepal, um, there was this outhouse where they used the bathroom and it was like five steps from the house. And he was talking about how he was so pragmatic about any time he would never let his feet hit the ground. He'd always have to put on socks and shoes. But he's like, Nepal taught him that that wasn't practical because if he had to go pee in the middle of the night, if he had to go, you know, do whatever, he didn't want to have to put his socks and shoes on all the time to go walk from the house to the outhouse. And he's like, I learned about grounding and like what it did. And, you know, for me, um, I grew up in Boston. So I grew up right near the ocean. I'm, I'm called love the ocean and like having my feet in the sand, having my feet, you know, in the, in the, in the ocean. And um, even now living in Georgia, you know, there's, there's, there's beaches five hours away, but I, I live right down the street from Ackworth. I'm like, I'm, I'm there as much as I can at the lake and at the beach. But what it does for you is uh, it just, it brings you back to center. It brings you to nature. And actually from a, from a uh, scientific standpoint, it, it re-regulates like um, energy systems in your body and different ions and things like this. And so when you plug into the ground, um, you're, re you're reducing stress, you're reducing inflammation because your stress is going down and you can do three. The one, the one thing I started doing the last year, which has been really great. Um, and it's not great for skin because I'm starting to get like sunspots, but um, <laughs> I go out. I get, uh, I get, as, you know, as, as, as much as nature will allow, I'll get down to just shorts and I'll work out on the ground with my shoes off with the sun shining. So I'm getting three for one, like I'm outside. I'm just getting four for one. I'm getting outside. I'm getting grounded. I'm getting into working out and I'm getting into the sun, like vitamin D. And it's just, if you can stack these protocols, like you stack a lot of the things that you do, it just becomes a lot more easy to build them into your life. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You, you sound like you got it. Um, Got it under control. Got I don't. Control. I don't. I'm still a wild yeah. man trying to figure out the universe, but uh, <laughs> but I definitely have these tools that that help me. And again, it's 80-20. It's like there's times I don't want to do anything. I'm lazy as shit, and I just want to lay down and, like you said, stay in the house for a day or eat some junk food. But I come back to center. I know what wellness is, and I know what health is, and I know if I'm too far off the side, I need to come back and just kind of get back in alignment. No, that that makes sense. Um, I feel like I need to hang out with you like every day. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to meet you. I'm excited to meet you. I know I'm why like, Justin plugged us in. <laughs> I know, right? Like we need to hang out and connect. Um, yeah. There's so many things, other things we could talk about. Um, but I'm glad that we went down down this path because I think it's important. I think it's really important for today. Yep. Um, I think it's great that, you know, I can be in corporate America. I can be a professional, but also have this conversation. You know, it doesn't mean that you know, I'm a holistic practitioner or that I'm a yoga teacher or that, you know, something that's in that specific category, that that only gives me the permission to, to speak about this. Like, I'm not actually doing this for a living, but this is what I live for, like in a sense, like to be a part of the universe, to be a part of the collective, to provide service, yes. to um, figure out how to shine the light and be a light worker. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm looking for the next thousand conversations we're going to have. I can't wait to meet you in person. Thank you so much for being you and, and being vulnerable and courageous. Um, you know, there's, there's this beautiful narrative that's going around people like Brene Brown, Simon Sinek talking about vulnerability and authenticity. And it's just, it just makes a huge difference, especially in corporate. We need more people like you in corporate that are grounded, that are in alignment, that you're into other things outside of corporate, regardless of what that is. And you can bring it in and you can be authentically yourself and it inspires other people. So thank you so much for being you. Thank you, Jesse. My pleasure. Heck yeah. I can't wait for the next conversation. We'll chat soon.